what else? Hello, Hello, everybody on Facebook and, and other Give other them platforms. shout the out to yes, everyone <laughs> hanging out. We got Mr. Who 30. We got Simon. We Hello. got over here on the Discord, Hola. if I can find my tab. We got Jim Hendrickson. We got Yanni. We got hey, Mr. Yanni. Certainly Bruce. Mr. Certainly Bruce will be joining us later. <laughs> he wished us a very enjoyable show. Thank you, Bruce. You will be missed. We miss you. Oh, man. Do you, what Would you like to start the show? <laughs> or we, we're still doing. All right, cool. Well, the latest update, we'll run through the... <laughs> we'll run through the uh, the memes. But uh, the first one, hey, go to adafruit.com slash free. There's a new addition to the freeness. For the next 100 days, Adafruit will be offering a free mask to go with every order. So for orders that are a dollar or more, that's basically every order, you get a free black surgical style mask. For US orders only. So you can check these out here. These are now being donated with every order, dollar or more. Um, yeah, what else can I say about these masks? They're black, they're Adafruit black. They look really nice when you wear them. It's uh, the mask that I favorite. use when I go out. It's yes, my favorite, they are most comfy favorite mask. mask. It's a little bit bigger for women, I found, but right. it's so like Brandy, fits. her face a little bit. Uh, same thing with mom. I wish I had brought one up. I saw a really cool trick of you gotta, folding the sides to make sure that they're sealed oh, up. Yeah, nice they're downstairs <laughs> where they need to be. But hey, that's uh, the latest updates uh, to the many goodies that you can get. There are, of course, other goodies for orders that are like uh, 99 or more. You get the Perma Proto half size breadboard. For orders that are 149 or more, you get the Perma Proto. And then a random Stemma QT board. For orders that are 200 or more, you get the free ground shipping for continental US along with the other freebies and then for 299 or more you get all that free shipping plus the circuit playground express limited time only yes you can get as many as you want i think all of them as it says but yeah check out adafruit.com/free for the more details all right well we start off the weeks with mondays here i guess it could start on a monday uh, circuit pythons happen every Monday at 2 p.m. unless there's a U.S. holiday, which then it'll work on the preceding day. But for this week, there wasn't one, so it happened on Monday at 2 p.m. It's a nice time. The archive is up on YouTube and all of the other podcasting services, so check that out. It's a great time to check in with the devs in the community as it keeps growing. Discord is growing. That's where it happens. The, the circuit python meeting happens on Discord in the circuit python channel, and uh, yeah. Please, please join it if you'd like, or you can check it out on the archive. New, new news letter. This one happens a week. If you'd like a newsletter that's focused on Adafruit products that happens once a week, you can go to adafruit.com slash newsletter and check that out. Do you want newsletters every single day? Well, if you do, you can opt in to subscribe to particular categories, such as Python on hardware, 3D printing, maker business, and Pedro's podcast. I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just ad-libbing. All right, that's the show. Goodbye. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, those are all the folks uh, pre-COVID. Uh, your orders help us out, so we really do appreciate when you place those orders. Uh, so, yeah, normally I, I save this till the end, but the end is the beginning. All right. I think that worked well. And then back over to Discord. Good by morning, board I'm sorry. everybody <laughs> hanging out. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's project. It's this week's project is on the learn.adafruit.com. You'll see it now, and here it is. Super handy project. Usually when we work on stuff, it like gets thrown on a shelf. This one stays on my desk because it's so handy. It's it is a used. portable boom box featuring Raspberry Pi powered by a BrainCraft hat. This is an awesome little, uh, little portable yeah, boom box. Yeah, the way I see the BrainCraft hat, it is a screen, an amplifier, everything, a, a, a control, everything you need, a fan, all the things you need to make your Pi into a fully capable uh, standalone unit, standalone device. The screen, the uh, the speaker, the joysticks built in, and there's other things in there too, that like microphones and all sorts of stuff for AI projects. Yes, yeah, so Jeff released a really cool uh, simplified version of this a couple weeks ago. The main thing here being the Kinko software that controls the joystick button on here. So you have your volume control, of course, yes. up and down. And then you have access to a change to a different YouTube stream by uh, tapping on the left and uh, right buttons. And then it is a five-way joystick, so you can push in, 
to reload, and then there's an additional button on the side, it's built in to the BrainCraft hat, that will pause the video. Sweet. Turn that down. So it is a snap fit together case. It all uh, can be assembled without any screws. You can add those if you want. Speaker built in into the back here. If I remove this cover here, you can see a nice little beefy speaker on the back, which pumps a ton of bass. I just turn that up a little bit. You can see this little guy just pumping out so much bass. Look at that. And what's so cool is it uh, increases the acoustics when you put on this little uh, little cone on there and of course lots of fun uh, picking out the different colors that you want to print your case out in uh, the case itself has a bunch of port openings so you have access to all of your ports so if you want to attach an additional keyboard or even an HDMI display you can attach other sound systems because you have access to the headphone jacks on there and then uh, you even have an option to have this mounted with a tripod. So we have these mounts on the back here so you can attach one of these little uh, tripods to 3 8 to quarter 20. You can attach these with uh, three M screws. It'll attach to the bottom like that. So if you want to have this a little bit elevated or if you want to have it on like a, a magic arm or something like that, you can have this in any orientation. Speaking of any orientation, Jeff made a really cool script where the joystick is actually looking at what the orientation is of the screen. So if you have it in pro portrait mode or if you have it like completely upside down, the joystick will know that and it'll remap all the buttons so everything is still uh, up is up and down will remain down. Exactly. And uh, the UI kind of works pretty universal across all sort of media playing devices. Mm -hmm. Up is volume up, down is volume down. Left and right will switch between YouTube playlists. Real quick note about the YouTube playlist, you can add to a, I don't know, a text file and you just tell the, the, the thing what, what's your exactly. unique ID. So you can put a live stream or a, a playlist, is that right? That's correct. Okay. You have access to your little status LED here so you can make sure that it's running and of course your SD card if you ever want to switch that out and change it's the nice OS for there. that. Everything is snap fit, like I said before. I have an additional case here. We're gonna show how the snap fit part works. It just grabs onto the case. If like you like so. the look of this case, it is printed in wood PLA filament, composite material. Yeah, so this was inspired by the Buddha machines. They're usually in brown is what I've seen. Brown, yeah. But Cardboard. there's a bunch of different colors and the snap fit action Yay. of that. I love that satisfying click and mm -hmm. snap that happens. And they also double as a nice little elevator. If you mm. want to have this on your desk, you have like a 15 degree viewing angle on that. And on the inside, you can see that we have a nice little cover for your screen. You can take a look at how the buttons all work. You have all your port openings. You have a little slit for your speaker. The way that the speaker is held on is with this nice little um, ring. And the reason I broke this out is because we needed a little bit of space to have the magnet uh, have like a little gap between the magnet and the back of the Raspberry Pi so it doesn't touch the circuit and short it out. So instead of having like this huge support material on there, I just broke this off because it's only about a millimeter that extends out. You didn't need a support material for all that. So just a little tip there when you're designing, uh, printing something in which you don't want support materials and such a tiny little um, height on that. You can just break out your part and have it snap fed in to save on all that support material you would have had. Some of the other functions of this is, of course, the airflow. Uh, you definitely want to enable your fan service. I tried running this without it, and I think after about a day in the Florida heat, it fried. It wasn't fried. outside, I mean. No, it, this was inside. I know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's still, not like the Florida heat did it. Um, the Florida heat outside made the house inside hot, and it like completely died. I posted a picture of that. What it looks like when your OS gets overheated. <laughs> so even broke the SD card yeah. too. It like completely, like, I don't know, like rotted it somehow. And like right. got Maybe so hot <laughs> that it just broke into pieces. Okay. So powered by USB-C on the top here. Oh, there's no battery for it now. Yeah, you can't attach a battery. I did have a It wouldn't way. fit in the case. I mean, it's... No, it would be like, <laughs> it would be right here and then the speaker would go. So it would be like sandwiched in between the speaker and the case. I did have an idea of that, but I didn't want to continue going down that route. Right. So it was supposed to be for a desktop. 
which mm -hmm. you should have access yeah, to keep, outlets there. Yeah, keep it plugged in. Yeah, it's a Pi. Pi portable Pi's are tough to do anyway, especially yeah. a Pi three or this sort of Pi. Mm -hmm. So of course we had to have the Bernie meme on there. It's a really cool lo-fi radio station. So you guys can check that out. Uh, any other things about this that I'm missing? You still have access to the Raspberry Pi OS. I do have a keyboard attached on there, so you have a very teeny tiny desktop if you want to be able to still use it as a desktop computer. Teeny tiny little screen, but you can just barely make out what the menu items cool. are on the desktop. Yes, so. yes. Yeah, any other things that folks have any questions on? Maybe how you got that lovely texture on the surface. That's a good one. Yeah, I think that's so... Good one. How did you get that lovely surface? If you can it make it out. It doesn't look 3D printed. About, yeah, I can... I there can, you go. Um, so on the blue I'll, section here, you can see how the texture is on that. It's just the powder-coated uh, metal spring bed on 3D printers. You can get this from a number of different vendors. I think we went with... Uh, this one's a little bit tiny, closer. Tiny Machines version of that. There we go. So you can see the, the powder coat. Uh, texture there. Very, very nice texture well, for these nice. type of enclosures. Yeah, I, I do lot. recommend. You're only going to get that on the first layer, so whatever you're designing, make sure that's the first layer. These are two pieces, and well, that's the orientation of the print. And so you have this nice texturized look on here, and the Prusas come with this, and the Tiny Machine beds have this as well. You can see on the side, I wish that would happen on the sides too, huh? See the yeah. lines on there. I think you could use uh, Kira's fuzzy oh, uh, feature yeah. to do that. So a nice little simple case to house a pie. Doesn't and have the to brain be craft hat. with the Braincraft hat. Yes. yes, correct. Complete your pie with the Braincraft hat. Is this my new marketing slogan. copy? I'm working <laughs> on. All right, let's check in on the uh, in the Tango chats. wants anyone... to see the sp the speaker playing yeah. again. Yeah, check yeah, out. So this... See if you can make that out. Yeah. See that. All that bass going. Yeah, I can do a little bit of. There you go. So I really love how powerful the built-in uh, amplifier is on the Raspberry on the uh, Braincraft the hat. Up. We're able to get some very nice watts out of this. It's a I2S digital audio. So it's not the kind of crappy audio that you might be familiar with. This is high-quality stereo. And what I really like about this is that it just thumps and moves your entire desk. Yeah. So you can really feel the, the vibrations. Bass. Are nice. You can feel the vibrations of the music. Yeah. If you want the details on the speaker, I I have a I have it here. Here's the the product ID, four ohms, three watts. Um, you can you can hear the difference too. So you can keep this off, or you put the cone back on. Yes. You can hear the acoustics dramatically yeah. increase. Yes, it's shooting it out oh. to your ears. Very cool. Super lovely, yeah. Great, great job on the uh, adding a tripod mount. I think that's a really nice uh, way to have folks uh, mm -hmm. have it mounted and you know, sort of things. Like I have these little these little things like this. Mm -hmm. They work out really well. I put it on a claw, I put it on a GoPro thing. Yeah, so it's about a like a 15 degree viewing angle without. Or if you can put a ball head on the tripod, you can have this oriented at any angle. And of course, the sketches for all this available, Fusion 360 file, if you want to have this be portrait or just, you know, upside down or whatever, which yeah. way you can orient this to whatever uh, size you want. Yeah. So the ability to just have YouTube playing on there, super useful if you want to have uh, you know, something else streaming. There's two headphone jacks, right? Yeah, there's two for headphone jacks, one for the- uh, The I2S, and this is like- From the Raspberry Pi, yeah. Your regular analog audio or something? Mm-hmm. Cool. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and, and jump into the learning guide. JAC is oh. asking how is it tuned? Uh, it is a script inside of the Raspberry Pi OS, which we'll go over on the guide. Jumping over to the guide here, posted the link to this. Actually, no, I didn't. I posted it on Twitter. Let's see if I can get the link real quick. Learn.adafruit.com slash, I don't know, <laughs> sorry. I'm uh, in the admin, so it has a different uh, Learn URL. guide for this now posted right, so you can folks. follow along YouTube radio is the, the suffix or maybe yeah suffix let's go ahead and take a take a look at the guide for this mm -hmm. pretty simple build in terms of assembly 
Yay, so, there's soldering. Um, a the, actually, bit of, there's one that's portion thing. of soldering. It's a little bit of soldering. This speaker here does not come with uh, this connector, so we just solder that to these, these two cables together. Yeah, but we'll, we'll go through that in a minute. All right. And the Braincraft hat is... Uh, I think Anne moved it to the featured page, uh -huh. it looks like. Uh, we'll have to move it back because uh, that's the hero. Yeah, and one of the cool things about this is that it's, it's actually in stock. <laughs> Stop. Unbelievable. This is a miracle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you can tell how often things are stocked when we release a project. <laughs> mm. it, yeah, it's normally... It's a good problem happen. to have. Yeah. So go ahead and pick one up. There's a ton of things you can do with the Learn. It um, does come with the Machine fan. Learn. That's great. It comes with the fan. One of the first projects that we did was a camera yeah, that does the... Uh, machine is. learning so you can point it at anything it'll do object recognition that's such a fun demo it really is a great one and uh here's a whole thing about braincraft if you'd like to Tensor look flow, yeah but yeah this is uh the original guide which also has been updated wait that's not the original guide i'm sorry the, the uh well <laughs> i was just looking for the original guide from jeff epler Oh, the lo-fi one, yeah. The lo-fi yeah. one. Like, it's, it's I'm linking to all the same stuff. Yeah, they're just companion kind of guides. Here it is. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Shout out to Jeff and Melissa, of course. Yeah. yeah. A couple weeks ago, we talked about there were some uh, some kernel issues with the module. Yes. And uh, we go through the steps on and getting a quick little Band-Aid fix until it is updated. But for now, let's go ahead and yes. run through the guide. All right, so let's go through that. So that was the overview page. Just walks you through the parts that you need. We'll make a mental note of adding the BrainCraft hat because you Definitely need one. Definitely go pick one up now before they're out of stock. Yes. All right, 3D printing page. 3D printing page. Just a couple of parts here. Hardest part is going to be just picking up what colors you want to have this printed in. Like you were saying, the only thing that needs supports is going to be the tripod little section oh, of this. Let's see that little. And it's just this bottom part here because we need these like standoffs so we have room to get away from the little snap fit part on there. So that's what that's there for. And about like a 6% density for the um, for the uh, support is all you need. And that's pretty much it. That's only optional too if you want to have the tripod mm -hmm. on there. Everything else is just snap fit oriented already in the way to print this, everything facing uh, face down. Cool. You have the ability to edit the uh, Fusion 360 files. I'll give you the link right there, or you can just download all the STLs on Thingiverse, yep. which I think they just post every, everywhere else, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Colts and uh, we added to Prusa and all the other places as well. Okay. Moving on to the assembly, uh, the speaker holder uh, press fits into the back. So you can have that little separation between the board and the magnet on the speaker. You are gonna wanna add some gaffers tape to the magnet, just in case you do push it in a little bit too far. Um, it doesn't make contact thing. with the back. I did do that by mistake. <laughs> It'll also give you a nice little cushion in terms of tolerance to push it through the uh, ring part. So you can have a nice little bit of uh, like a press fit tolerance on it. It'll hold it on and it'll make sure that the speaker does not rattle when you're pumping all those bassy tunes. Like I said before, the only thing you're going to need to solder onto the speaker is that JST, uh, the two-pin JST uh, connection that'll plug into one of the stereo ports on the BrainCraft hat. So you can choose uh, left or right. Uh, or have should. two speakers. You can have two. I should have done that, huh? Nah, I think it's... I think there's enough room think... on there. there. Might be enough room. That'd be a nice little update for that. Let's make it a big boombox. <laughs> I that's think the, that's the future Jeff project. had already posted yes. one. I would love a bigger screen, but that's me. <laughs> like I, would, <laughs> I would not use the print craft hat. I would use uh, something else. With, oh, uh, I missed this question on the 3D printing part. Um, got Justin Campbell asking, how long does the print take? I'm going to say one, two, uh, about three hours for all of the parts. Right, right. So about an hour and a half each. Uh, about a four, about 40 minutes each print. Okay, depending on your print. slice settings, normally yep. like 90. Mm -hmm. I'm printing at 90 uh, millimeters a second on this, uh, 0.2 layer height. So yeah, about 40 minutes. Or if you have two part. printers, you can get it done in twice there you as go. fast at an hour or take, and a half. Yeah, take an hour. All right, moving on. Nice, good question, good question. And comment two, looks like a DIY GoPro. That's a good idea, yeah. It's definitely. 
All right. Let's see, you talked about the speaker assembly and then pushing that through. Mm -hmm. The case lays right on top, or the bottom case. Uh, you lay the Pi right on top of that with the Pi already assembled. Yep. Uh, did not talk about how to install the Pi because it's just a hat. Yeah, just it plugs just right into the pins. It. You can't <laughs> fit it in wrong, I yeah. don't think. You can bend the pins. Mm. Don't bend the pins. Yeah. We suggest don't bend the pins. <laughs> Uh, it snaps in. Um, if you go over to the overhead, you can yes. see uh, you do have to pivot this uh, at an angle. At an angle, at a certain way. So mm -hmm. you'll take the side right next to the vents, put it at an angle, and then it should just Click in. pop in like that. I hope you saw that clickingness of the snap fit part of that. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's assembled. Oh, you can. You do have. Um, M uh, three millimeter size mm. screws if you do want to add. I think it's like a five millimeter uh, tall mm. M3 screws if you want to secure it in there. Yeah. But it's uh, held in there pretty good. Yeah. And then uh, just align that um, speaker wire to this little slit here. Yes. Uh, there was a way for me to actually like thread that through, like have an additional hole on there, but I just didn't get to that part. Okay. No, I like it's clean without the hole there. Yeah. Can see that there. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason why that that wire is going through there, just so I didn't have to uh, thread it through. Yeah, and it would look nice, but it would get annoying after. Um, yeah, Taking in terms apart. of assembly. Yeah. Oh yeah. The yeah, modularity of it. Like, thread it first, then solder it, and then you can't. Yep. Unsolder it. Cool. Good questions. Let's see. Moving on. Oh, any tips on like opening it? Like once you've close the case yeah the a, smaller little bit yeah this a, little guy right here yeah so once you what you want to do is like kind of slightly squeeze Shit. <laughs> you slightly go ahead and show it slow-mo there you go as you kind of press in those edges those walls that flexes it enough to open it there you so go like that. that's how you open it the only reason this works is because the walls are kind of thin enough for it to flex like that yeah I always again. forget about like the mechanics of a snap fit and what makes it snap and what makes it fit. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, continue on with our journey, the learn guide. I like said before the tripod optional, you get a, the um, uh, M3 eight millimeter long screws that will attach to the bottom here. And I think this like component is gonna be reused over and over again in a lot of projects that require this because I really like having this tripod part being separate Sort of being baked into the actual um, yes. your case because then you have the option to either use it or not. Yeah, and it slims down and just because of the way that this would be in there, you know, you you'd be printing it like vertically, so it eliminates any tolerance issues with having the uh, three eighth um, quarter twenty screw. Uh, but it's always an issue with uh, having that tolerance when it's printed at different orientations. Yes. yes. So yep. just print it straight up. There won't be any issues, and it'll just screw right in. You don't have to tap oh, any cool. of the plastic. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that is the alarm guide in a nutshell. Please check it out. It's live it's now. The only thing that's the additional thing in there is just setting up the Raspberry Pi, and that. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I that links you <laughs> to uh, setting up your SD card. I recommend using the official Raspberry Pi imager. Uh, we were used to using other third-party tools like Etcher mm -hmm. and doing all this crazy... I haven't done Pi stuff since Etcher. This was a lot more pleasurable to Yay. use. Yay, thank you, Pi Foundation. <laughs> You've made it easier for It works folks. on the, uh, natively, on the uh, M1, on the OS, yeah. M1 oh, and MacBooks on M okay. and uh, any other OS. So that was uh, quite surprising that uh, all the new operating systems work with this. <clears throat> so I link to their official guide on setting that up. After all of the updates are applied, you'll do a uh, you'll enable SSH so you can tunnel into it and start doing uh, some of the library installs that are going to be required to set everything up. First one that needs to be set up is the Blinka libraries, which will have the motor control, the audio card, the voice card that does all the sound, and those steps are all linked in there. After that, you'll set up the uh, the fan and the display and then a quick little troubleshooting section on that. It's just like a little chunk of code that you'll have to update. It'll pin the kernel to a known version that works. Hopefully that gets updated in the future. Uh, the one way to tell if you'll need to 
add that patch is if your audio is stuttering or if your uh, display is like uh, static. Hmm. Uh, there was just some module changes that were added in there. After that, you want to install the Kinkos mode script and that is where you can add all of the playlists uh, that are, and, and it shows you like where to get the YouTube video ID for each specific stream. And then I'll just show you the commands on how to uh, go into the, uh, what is it called, like nano editor to edit the text that uh, controls that script. That's pretty much it. Sweet. Kiosk. Kiosk. Kinkos. I keep Kinkos. seeing Kinkos. I know. It's funny. I remember Kinkos. <laughs> Never got a job there, but I remember it. <laughs> All right, well, this is an awesome project. I really hope so folks check it out. this stays on my desk now, it's, it's playing all of the heavy. latest news. One of the craziest things is that, you know, all the news happening while I was building this. So yeah, it was pretty I was uh, able to see the up to the minute mm -hmm. of all the craziness happening. Right. And uh, opened my eyes on, wow, this is such a great way to just be on top of things going on without having to have uh, your phone. You so know, much better than their the Pi being on a shelf, not doing anything. Maybe collecting That's the dust. best thing about this, that it actually yeah, uh, yeah. has you using your Pi all the time. The only is. other thing that we're using our Pi 24-7 for is the OctoPrint Octo rig. We have, what, yes. like five of those that are always constantly on. Yeah. They never fail us, so I'm quite happy that uh, this little one-use appliance uh, can stick by and give it a lot of really useful info. I don't know. Is it a Pi 3 or 4? This is a 4. It will not work on the 3. The, oh. the the hat or the Braincraft hat will not work on a three. Sorry, folks. You need that your speed. Pi three. You need the pie. No, four. you need that speed. No yeah. one's asked that, but maybe they did. But it just occurred to me. Well, what pie is it? There's a bunch of them. Well, the pie four is the answer. Oh, so the one that's in stock, I believe, is the four gig model. There's two, four, and eight. I believe these are eight gig models, just because that's what was in stock. Four gig. Four gig is in stock. Definitely go pick one up right now, because again, another it's item that here. is. Almost right. never in stock. We have trouble keeping these. They're so popular. There's the, the one gigabyte. Wow. We got the eight gig or one there. Oh, there you go. You can add a stock as the yeah, two, but the four. one that's four. four is a really good option. And then eight is also available. It is definitely worth it since this feels like a desktop. Would the one gigabyte work? Eh, maybe. I'm gonna guess it does. It's just gonna. You Which know, is, you're only doing one operation for this. Yeah, we only tested Still out YouTube. the four. Is that right? Like this one is actually the four? No, these are eights. It was the only thing that was in stock. Okay. The eight gig models. All right, so <clears throat> Pedro's tested the eight, but it we should work think four. the four works. It's just RAM. Okay. Again, it's just running YouTube, so. Right, so maybe the one is fine, because it's a great price for yeah. a, a really nice Pi Tayago uh, Riaz is asking if uh, you feel like it was overheating. Yes, on the top of the show, we mentioned <laughs> it I overheated tested so it. much that it was whoa, kind whoa, whoa. Of... this was without the fan. So yes, yes. you need the fan. I tried sure. running this without the fan to see you know how because mm -hmm. it's you know the fan can be it can no, be loud. <laughs> it, it might depend on where you are too. So mm -hmm. so Jeff had it running without the fan for a couple days. He's in Nebraska. He's in Nebraska though. in a nice, uh, a nice, nice basement, I mm -hmm. think is what he said. Yep. Uh, here in Florida though, it's uh, We can't do that. It wasn't as nice. <laughs> so you definitely need the fan yeah. enabled for that. But the story was that the SD card, like, it, it got, got so hot heat, that it, it got so hot that it, it when Pedro, yeah, it just cracked in half when he tried to pull it out. Mm -hmm. I don't think he pulled it out forcefully. It just, no, I just grabbed it. It's just kind of he usually do. dust, <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> You have a photo of it on uh, mm -hmm. on Instagram. Yeah, I posted about That's it. That's funny. So yeah, you'll definitely want to have that fan running. And like we uh, showed already, all of the vents, it's definitely warm. you can it's feel. A little warm. Yeah. yeah, I do have the fan service turned off right now, so it's not so loud. <laughs> right. Yeah, that card's a little hot. Yeah, little. Right but this because we turned the fan off to not get ID'd and or you know content ID'd and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sound all right. That's, let's see if uh, I could turn it on just so you can yeah, let's hear see it. what it sounds like. You can kind of hear what it sounds like there. Power up my engine here. Yeah. And there are instructions for the commands to start and stop the fan service for that. That's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's not too bad. That's what it sounds with like the, with the fan With on. this and then like my, my iMac fan, I can't tell who's who in so, it. We have printers going. We have like a bunch of air filters going. I can't the, hear you. What'd you say? The the Roomba going around. Mm -hmm. 
My milling machine. It's <laughs> milling. a lot of noise. <laughs> noise, 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 noise. All right. Well, with that, thank you folks for uh, checking out the project. That was this week's project. Are you ready to jump into uh, what are you prototyping? A uh, real quick question okay. from Kuha007. Adam is asking, question from last week's Dark Saber build. Uh, you guys said the two millimeter new pixel would work. So I ordered it, going through the learn guy, and I thought you need 34 lights per side of the Saber. Uh, two millimeter, uh, the two meter one only has 60 total. Will that still work? Yeah, you can update the uh, code to tell how code. many pixels you have. It's in the code. And let me pull up the question here. Yes. I think yeah. there's a section in the guide that tells you where to update the number of pixels you have. Yeah. Like right in the code. Yeah, if it's the, if it's not long enough, then yeah, you might run into something. Hmm. I, it'll still work. I think we might be off by a pixel or two. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think it'll be off by a pixel or two. But it'll still work. You can uh, add more pixels to it as you want. Um, you can't solder additional pixels to the end mm -hmm. of it? Yeah. <laughs> nice, yes. Well, uh, we'll have to check that one out. The, uh, the Bernie 3D model. All right. Uh, any more questions, though? We'll, uh, we'll answer. Oh, that's it. Cool. We're moving on to what are we prototyping? OK. So this week, um, which one do you first? Wings. Yeah, the Pico. Picos. I guess people want to see Picos. All right. So these sweet little Pico boards. We got uh, found them in stock last week, I believe. Got them in on Friday. And of course, first thing we always do is build a bunch of cases and stands for these. This little four dollar board is amazing. We're in Circuit Python. It was super easy. If I'm able to go in there and just stumble my way across to adding uh, CircuitPython on this, anybody could. So all the downloads for this are, are at circuitpython.org. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see the build for Pico. And these just plug right into uh, USB on your computer that loads up like a um, USB drive. You can just drag and drop all your code in there. Libraries are all working on there. Not all of them, but uh, the ones at least for setting up this simple project that I made a case for. So I've seen a bunch of cases being released. A lot of them are just like a case to enclose it. I wanted to make sure that this was a nice little project case. So you have access to your USB and you also have a nice little slide switch on there. So turn that on. You have a nice little NeoPixel stick inside there and it's so bright you can't see. Let's see. I'll turn that down a little bit. That's eh, not going to work. Let's look at the inside. Let's look at lights. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just two new pixel sticks inside there to be set up like a little uh, grid. They're just soldered together and you can kind of see the Pico on there. You have uh, room for a LiPo battery on the bottom there. There were some questions on why I set up the uh, JST for the battery in a certain way. They do have manuals uh, for the Pico. You can read through that, but there's a section that tells you exactly how to power it with a LiPo battery. And it shows the connections there if you want to set up your own. So a nice little simple case that houses the, you can see the slide switch on there. And the Pico on the bottom. So we're just using these little um, 3 printed standoffs. And because it's like an M2, correct? For the, for the screws? Yes, they are M2 uh, holes. Yeah, and the printers are you know, able to print those teeny tiny little uh, yes, standoffs. Yes, the, the Creelties are able to. My Ultimaker, um, hmm. no, it's so weird. Some printers can print little it's just, tiny It's things. just the, the, the line width has not been mm. adjusted for my Ultimaker. Ah. So if I adjust that, then yes, it'll probably work. But yeah, but I, I like how not. strong these guys are. So uh, you can have those. You don't need any, again, no screws required. You have access yeah. to those yeah. uh, nice little standoffs there. Yeah. So I'm sorry I didn't like that. Same thing with this one. So uh, just working on a nice little grid uh, setup for that. Yeah, gives you some uh, separation between the pixels to mm -hmm. get that kind of effect. Yeah. Um, could print it in black, swap, I mean, print it in white first and then swap it for mm -hmm. black, and then you'll get that kind of grid. Or you can make them two separate pieces, as you think you were trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, it's skin cool. it's cool snap little, together. Kind of a wearable name tag almost maybe. Yeah, that's, that's cool. a nice little idea yeah. for that. But yeah, that's, that's the first project that we, we got a nice little mm -hmm. NeoPixel LED Pico Yeah, there, um, Katni's working on the guide for this. Uh, some of the code that was on there, he, he said it didn't quite work. We had to do some adjustments to it. Yeah, just use uh, the, uh, the Uber NeoPixel guide code. You can use that, that'll work fine. Um, so if anyone's interested in 3D modeling and stuff, um, I went ahead and uploaded um, my 3D model of the Pico board, um, you know, to GrabCAD because it's it's a good place for uh, for mechanical designs. Thingiverse isn't quite what that's for, so that's that's uh, all, yeah, eight million people files. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we got the step file, and um, this is one to one accurate like dimensions that I pulled from the data sheet, um, and. The Pi Foundation has since released their own step file. Um, thanks John, JP, John Park for sending that to me. I don't know where he found it, I can ask, but uh, it's somewhere. <laughs> I'm just telling you where I shared mine. So if you'd like to grab this one, you can grab it from GrabCAD. Um, a link for that is, I guess, I'll throw it here in the, in the Discord channel. That's the right link. Why not in Facebook while I'm here? I don't see the chat. Look at this chat window for Facebook. Whoa. Like I can't even help Facebook here, even if I wanted to. I think that's the, yep, I figured it out. Sweet. It's just the UI is all, all gross and silly. Mm -hmm. And then here on YouTube, folks, if, I don't know if links work there, but there you go. There's that as well. All right, well, that's the Pico. Are we next, are we on to the next one? Yeah, so we'll be doing a lot more projects with the Pico. Looks like you already got some MIDI projects on the yeah, list. Yeah, a collab and project with Liz Clark, of yeah, course. Yeah, super cool. MIDI fighter. Yeah. Kind of sense. There's so many pins. MIDI oh. fighting cool, with cool. the Pico. Or it might be a feather, RPF uh, yeah, 2040. Yeah, a feather. <laughs> might be a feather. Yeah, since, we'd like feathers. So much so that we the figured. audio is still being worked on, so yeah, probably a feather. Or Teensy, <laughs> one of those. Sorry. Probably Teensy. <laughs> So hard. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for clearing the table. Um, we're still prototyping, yeah? Yes. So right. there were some questions about, oh, which one? Uh, well, that's, that's not a prototype. It's like a shop talk thing. Ooh. Yeah. So, hey, we got wings. Remember these wings? Oh, no, I can't show them. I can hold it up. We got these wings. Yeah, we got these wings. So um, we reworked the, f the plate so that it uh, it's less boxy and a little bit more you know, better. Come on, feather. There we go. Whoa! Oh, it literally just slapped me in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the comment is, uh, you know, w w <laughs> I don't know what to say. Sorry. <laughs> it literally slapped me in the face. <laughs> this is the, wow, the uptone of this project. It's just slapping me in the face now. <laughs> Yes. So this one's been at work for quite a while now. Yeah. Uh, one of the reworks that has been applied to it is having it be wings instead of feather, fairy wings, and then having some additional Sorry, yes, uh, yeah. shapes for it. So it could be like a bat yeah, wing. Yes. No. Yeah, so, bat so wing. yeah, we, we'd like to not uh, you know, do just um, fairy butterfly wings. Mm -hmm. So I, I printed this set of, um, of kind of bird crow wings. Um, it's nice lightweight. You can, of course, cut this, laser cut it on a like a vinyl cutter out of paper, or cut it out of acrylic if you'd like. Um, it's more modular, so it's easier to swap out these wing clips. I, I really want it so folks can not be tied down to a specific set of wings. That was my whole goal. Um, there's still work to be done. Uh, I'm I'm working on it. Um, if you like dragons, like we do. I found these dragon wings off Amazon. Um, so these these right here, it can it can pull them, it can push them and stuff. It's just like the motor um, code. We need to rework it so that it's a lot more smoother and more gradual. Because right now it it, it kind of does that because the I don't know how to code better. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, dragon wings, um, bird angel wings, and then we'll have those butterfly wings. So three different sets, three different styles. Hopefully for all the people who like wings. Um, what else can I say about it? Um, yeah, any comments and things like that? Let me know. Um, there's still work to be done. Yeah, Bjorn is saying that uh, 
uh, cool. Might not fly, but still cool. Yeah, sorry about that. It doesn't actually fly. I know. I think the funniest thing is going through a doorway with those. Yeah. All right, I'll stop that now. So one of the other things you're working on is like a remote switch, I think, right? Yeah, on and off. I have some, some ideas to make a remote switch. But uh, as you saw, it, it slapped me in the face. So <laughs> that's uh, what I can say about that. More to come. Awesome project there. We'll see. All right, uh, I wanted to do a, a quick it. look at this old project. Um, not really that old, but whatever. It got an update to the code. Um, it, it's an Infinity coaster, so it got an update. The code wasn't working um, since the latest updates to CircuitPython library, so now it works. So if anybody would like to build their own uh, Infinity mirror that's Bluetooth controlled, um, the code should run now with the latest version of CircuitPython. Um, I will connect to it via the Bluetooth Connect app. This uses an itsy bitsy. Sorry, it should have been a feather, but it's an itsy bitsy. <laughs> it's an itsy bitsy. Um, you can use the controller and you can change, um, I guess, the animation and then uh, change the color w while it's animating. So that's pretty neat. So if you're looking for a cool infinity mirror that can be controlled via Bluetooth, this might be a fun one to build. We also have an infinity cube. All right. It's pretty cool. So if folks want a link to that, I don't have one. So I have one. It's right here. <coughs> Thank you, sir. And now uh, this is some mirror. I feel like an actual cup is on there. Or whatever. <laughs> Posting these everywhere. Thanks. I don't have a link to it. All right. Well, it's in there. Cool. All right. Next up is yeah, what was the updated dark saber guide. Yeah. So some people were saying that the lightsaber kit has the uh, Feather M4 on it, and the code that was up there was for the uh, Feather uh, BLE. Yeah, so Lamar suggested, hey, we should make it rework, or you know, make, uh, offer some code in the guide um, that will work with the M4, so non-Bluetooth code. So what we've done is we added an extra page. So if folks have the Feather M4 Express, this will walk you through installing CircuitPython on your M4. So anybody who got the lightsaber kit, they should be able to use this with the exception of like some of the parts that don't fit, but the Feather M4 will surely fit and it will surely work. Uh, so yeah, these two different pages, right? You got the M4, you use the M4. You got the Feather NRF52840, you use that Feather NRF5240. The code page uh, accommodates for both of them. So as you read through it, 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 it makes sure that, hey, these are the libraries that you need for both of the Feathers. And then these are the specific BLE libraries. The naming conventions are pretty, um, consistent here. So BLE and Bluefruit, you know, those are the Bluefruit libraries. And then if you have the Feather M4 Express, well, that's all the libraries you need. You don't need any BLE libraries, right? And uh, here's some screenshots to show you what your uh, CircuitPython USB drive should look like. They're pretty much the same. The, the only difference here is there's, there's Bluefruit BLE libraries. All right. So this first piece, of course, is download the Feather NR5240 code from GitHub. Let's keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And here's the Feather M4 code from GitHub. Very similar code, a little bit lighter because no Bluetooth. Yeah, and then here's the sound effects stuff. So pretty uh, simple stuff. Just to note here that the sound effects are hosted in the BLE code repo because I didn't want to have multiple places to grab the sounds. So that's why I have it noted here. So if you're looking for the sounds and you don't know where they are, keep reading the learn guide because they're right here. Cool. All right. So that is the update to the Darksaber. One more note. Um, uh, a couple folks were asking if, uh, if the small blade parts had a bit of a problem with them. They don't. Um, I was hoping folks would glue them together, um, but uh, some folks would like to use screws instead. I like to use screws. It's just going to take more time. So that is, hopefully, we'll have that ready for folks next week um, as, as folks uh, really like the screws, I guess. Yeah, I do too. So, uh, um, just to huh? give some confidence, if people just want to use just glue, all of the um, oh right right yeah there's the master sword. The files. concern was like it wasn't strong enough with glue. Yeah. Um, 
uh, it depends on the glue, right? Like yeah. So this is all just regular super glue, yeah, and all the glue blades are all here. just butted up against each other to be right. held in place. And this sword is constantly being played with with the seven-year-old. Yeah. And you don't even see the seams because of the nature of the material itself. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so if this is able to survive, what, three years now with a seven-year-old? Yeah, it should. Or five, six, seven-year-old yeah, now? They're a little bit thicker parts, but I think it's still safe. I think you're to, safe. <laughs> give it a try, I, I would say. If a kid can... Yeah. I almost, this, if I this almost is, don't know if the screws will actually fit in the, in the small blade. That's a lot of screws. You're yeah. looking at four pieces. Just glue it. It'll work. Just glue it. It'll work, says Pedro. I mean, so. we don't have just one of these to, to show, you know, that it... That the glue holds it together. Yeah, we have two a, of these guys. Yeah, so this one just glued three together. pieces of the blade <laughs> that are glued together. Um, just super. Both glue, of these right? played with children, and they're still together. So yeah. that should give you some confidence on how strong the glue yeah. uh, is for holding PLA parts together. Yeah, they're bigger blades, but I mean, come on. They, they That's what work. I mean. Yeah. Because it's the bigger blade, you'd All figure right, that it'd weight. fall off. Yeah, yeah, but nope. Yeah, should be good. Cool. Unless right, you're really try. like attacking somebody with it, then yeah. Uh, you don't do that. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see. Going through the chats here. So people like the, the updates. People the, uh, like the Infinity Mirror. Cool. I'm glad you do. There's a, uh, it should work if folks build it. All right, well, I think that's it. We're ready to go into Community Makes and the Time Lapse Tuesdays. Yeah, this week's. All right. Uh, I saw this one being posted up in the 3 printing group. I thought it was cool. It is a model of the White House with some LEDs inside. So, of course, I took this opportunity to have it being lit up by the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. Yeah. So it's a nice little simple hey, project. There it is. So we connected it to the 16? No, 12. 12, 12 new pixel ring on there and just stuck it inside there. I did have to make a little crevice for it so that you can fit. Uh, originally it was just gonna be a Circuit Playground Express. Mm -hmm. That's why it's the circle. Mm -hmm. But the uh, Pico is about the same size as a, um, a Circuit Playground Express with a battery on it. Same uh, uh, height and the width on that too. So I, I put the... Wow. Put the... Uh, I'd show you the Thingiverse page, but here's what it looks like. <laughs> oh. Well, it's so bright and you can't even see the LEDs. I, they're kind of turned down on the uh, it's like a playground. But oh, well, nice I mean, little model yes. <laughs> of the White House there. What I was testing here was uh, all of the retraction for all these little pillars. Yeah, and that came out excellent. I'd love to show you the model, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it has an error. Really nice details on that. Can't load your I thing like right how uh, the tops here all printed nice, and this is by MakerBot. Uh, yeah, MakerBot and had designers. To... Todd maybe mm -hmm. might have designed it. Maybe uh, it says was 2016. Todd, I don't know. Ah. Todd, I think Todd left in 2012. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, really good model, nonetheless. Great model. Shout out to you know Maker whoever the yeah, designer, designer behind about. No, the MakerBot. Yeah. Really nice details for that, and. Um, just because my kid was watching, you know, inauguration yeah, he, and all that, he, he, was, super he was super excited, excited about that. About all the school work was all, you know, about presidents and all that. So he was totally into having a physical model of yeah. the White House. I mean, House. he went and like started designing one. In, oh, in uh, Tinkercad, yeah, yeah. Tinker well, Minecraft. And, it was, and, and it's Tinkercad. super cool because you know I've been to the White House. I've you know, uh, so he was able to ask questions about you yeah. know when I was there and all That's that. Very cool. And a That's nice a educational. Uh, physical model. Yeah, great, Ooh, great, I, great. I couldn't do this when I was a kid. You know, we can great. have a model that we could look at. Mm -hmm. So super cool little lamp there. Sweet. Oh, it is. Super oh. cool. Yeah. Great uh, material choice. White. Mm -hmm. White House. All right. So that's on Thingiverse. The White House executive. It's on MakerBot. Uh, what else can I say about yeah, it? They have a bunch of other. Um, like buildings too yeah which of course gavin wants now too he wants yeah. the capitol house yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's a, a yeah there's a there's, there's a whole group government structures when it works right cool. let's see yes there you are excellent all right well Got let's some community uh, makes yep some community makes let me scurry the links all right the first one here is a dodecahedron this is a uh we might have to skip these. The thingiverse oh. is uh, no bueno right now. 
a really quick looking at the chats roll. Cool. It worked. It just takes oh. a second. This is a great print uh, from Sim Slim Print. Think of her user Slim Print posted this up. Fantastic photos. I like it when photos are really nice. So that looks great. Great quality print. Fun little kind of uh, dodecahedron shape. Okie dokie. The next one here is a 3D printed unicorn horn. I really like these. Um, this is kind of the uh, the OG unicorn horn that I designed in Autodesk Maya. Someday it'll load. Yeah, this was super fantastic because I had yet to see somebody use this as a practical way to store and hold their hair ties. How, Brilliant. how wonderful! That is that is Brilliant. Brilliant, right? <laughs> yeah, not just a, not just a cosplay item, but it's great. Some useness of it. That's very cool. It, it's so nice to see folks still print this and make it. I had a lot of fun working on it. All right, the next one is um, a talking D20. This is sort of the the just the regular non-electronics uh, print, but this is one of my favorite kind of projects, really. It's an actual talking D20. And it has an accelerometer and a dink trinket inside and a built-in speaker. So when you um, the 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 faces are mapped so depending on what number it lands on it will literally say the number that it landed on it's a talking d20 it's still mind-blowing to me and mm -hmm. um, yeah like getting all the, the mapping all the vectors for this speaker. yeah so shout out to phil b paint your dragon who uh who spearheaded this project those many years ago what is it six years ago now hmm. and it's still a mind-blowing project that, it's It'd be great to see this in Circuit Python too, but this is a great print if you're just looking for a D20. Uh, th this looks great, so that's cool. The print's a really big one. All right, moving on. You'll like this one, Pedro, because you designed it. What is this? Oh, very cool. It is the Highland Shield from Link. Yeah, one piece. Link's it looks like, huh? Yeah, one piece. Wow. Yeah. So shout out to uh, Jess. Just because it looks amazing, scaled it down for my five-year-old son who wanted it in one piece. Looks amazing. Love the handle on the back. Printed on the Prusa. Uh, nice. MK. That's exactly what I did. Used uh, printed Prusa's it in one Galaxy piece. Silver. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, this was printed in two pieces, um, the original, but then we mm -hmm. printed it in one piece, right? Yeah. It's yeah. smaller, but it uh, fits a child's hand. Yeah. Cool to see this printed on a belt printer. Look at all the supports. Whoa, holy moly. Whoa. I could have printed this. Upwards. Don't, 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 it's fine. It's nice and solid. Look at that, infill. Whew, that's the whole spill right there. That's great, man. I like it. That is a shield. Well done, Jess. Well done. <laughs> it will. can be used as a real shield. Yeah. I know, I jumped on the couch, landed on it, and scraped uh, all of my knees up on, on that it. One. And the last one, a couple of years ago as well. Uh, this hey. is a little NinjaFlex dome diffuser designed to fit over these little NeoPixels that are sewable. And this was uh, spearheaded by Becky Stern. Yeah. Super useful they way to diffuse. Mm -hmm. uh, individual NeoPixel rings should fit these sewable ones. Yes. Pretty cool. And Since we're on the topic of uh, mm -hmm. diffusing LEDs, yes. uh, arm. arm our man VP was asking about the material that was used for printing the blade on the dark saber. Um, they're asking, is natural PLA good enough, or should I use clear PET G? So we tried clear PET G on there, and it was too clear. You could see like the yeah. infill. You see the you hot definitely spots. have to yeah. You can see the hot spots on there. You definitely have to sand it if you used the PET G. It will be probably stronger if you're actually going to try to use it in battle. It depends battle. on who's making it. Like Which the printer. Pet G, like the manufacturer. Who's the, oh, yeah. who's the printing manufacturer? Is it like Solutech? I or? think we tried Overturn. Overturn. Overture. Overture. Yeah. yeah. It's the, PL, the Pet G that we used for this. The PLA is just natural PLA, and that's what we ended up going mm -hmm. with because it was uh, like... like An diff uh, Not diffused, or foggy. Frosted, frosted enough. Yes. Like the, the look of it. We I, didn't I, have to do any additional sanding, and that... We went with that. I got a reason why we don't link to filament because, like, we'll link to filament and then a month later that company doesn't exist or mm -hmm. they just don't offer that anymore. So that's why we don't link filament. I'd like to, but we. It, yeah. It's whatever's on Amazon. It's whatever's available at that time. So 
That's just the way it is. No, right? We used to stock it. We used and to then stock filament. We used to have everything you need, but razor thin, razor thin uh, margins. margins and stuff. It's yeah. like twenty dollars for a spool. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Scrolling so thank down you everybody for, for sharing. Uh, you know their their makes. Those are really fun to take a look at. But that is the rest. That is it. I think that's the whole show. Just doing a quick scroll by of everybody in the chat for any additional questions. Insta was asking, which programming language would you choose? C Circuit Python. C++ or Python? Python. Python. We're, we're not programmers, we're designers, but if when we can, Python works out pretty well for us as we can read it. Yeah, I'm just looking through the notes here, so that's why I'm here. I think that's going to be it. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Cool, we've Don't covered all the things. forget that it is Wednesday, which means full lineup of shows continue in the afternoon, starting off with Show and Tell. Yeah, Show and Tell. We invite you to come on. You can join in um, by hitting up the Discord server. There will be a StreamYard link posted about five minutes before the show starts. So that'll be around 7.20, 7.25-ish p.m. Eastern Time, but that's how to join. There's also a learn guide on how to join because, uh, you know, it can be a little daunting and a little kind of confusing on how do I join, but if you go to a learn guide and type in show and tell, here's how to share your project. It's updated all the time. Hey, there's Liz. <laughs> and here's, it just runs it down. It even has tips on like checking your audio, what kind of, exposure. yeah, that sort of stuff. So very, very good guide and good crash course on like, all the things you need to know and how to join which and is, how to have a good experience. Which like, is with basically your tech. what uh, any meeting is in oh, the right. age now. Yeah, in this age now, it's like, <laughs> like how any school is now. Right, <laughs> that is actually what we need to <laughs> use for for all types of interactions now. Yeah, and this new normal. <laughs> yes. Well done. So we hope to see you there. And, it's always and then time. immediately after that, we have Ask an Engineer, full hour, Lamar and Phil talking about all the new stuff coming out at Adafruit, all of the new projects and boards and news around the maker world. That's right. Cool. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Tomorrow is John Park's workshop. It happens every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Lots of fun stuff like Make Code Minutes, Game of the Week, mm -hmm. Arcade Game of the, of the Week. Yeah. And uh, some look I'm back running, at some of the shows, like the Tuesday show. And, uh, I'm going to I forgot is. what the project he's working on. Super cool, though. Definitely check it out. And uh, yesterday, yep. JP's Pride Pick of the Week. Yep, Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. He had a double feature, so two episodes. Definitely check that out. A lot of cool projects that he's working on with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So yeah. definitely tune in. Really cool ways to uh, add, like, jumpers so you can connect those more easier way and then deep dive with scots are every friday at 2 p.m last friday had a massive one yes. with us all about the exposure of the pico board yeah. all the things that he was working on in secrecy mm -hmm. with blinka telling him hey yep. don't say anything or i'll choke you <laughs> no she didn't say that she's a good cake she was a delicious cake but uh yeah every friday please join definitely check out last Scott. week's episode for all of the cool work that was happening behind the scenes. And the week before was a great um, special guest, Dan Halbert, super yeah. ultra geek uh, moment there. So definitely check out uh, that one. Absolutely, every yeah. single Fridays, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. EST. All right, and that's gonna do it for the show, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the slap in the face. That was my favorite part of the show. <laughs> it really shows the project what it is. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Don't forget to make a great day. Bye, folks. See you later tonight. Mm -hmm.